Anyway, let's watch this Jordan Peterson. Is that it's not easy for the Chinese to maintain internal unity. And so they tend to focus on that. And perhaps that's partly why China hasn't been as expansionist a power as it might have been. Maybe that's changed to some degree in recent years. But it's, it's a very large country. It has an incredibly diverse population. And so they have... This is not a bad China take. Okay, let's continue. Their own problems, their own internal problems, which are significant and, and preoccupying. And so... Like surprisingly decent China take. He didn't immediately jump the f gun and go... He didn't automatically... Maybe... My expectation of like Western orators on China is uh, is like they them for them to like rush into headfirst dive into like anti-China takes where they're like they're terrible. So I hope that they stay focused on their internal problems and that they stay focused on solving them. I mean, China has been forward-looking enough, thank God, to allow the free market enterprise to flourish despite the proclivity for implementing top-down radical left state solutions. And the consequence of that has been, first of all, now China is a player in the international scene, for better or worse, I think mostly for better. I know that a lot of that was accomplished on the backs of the American working class, and that's catastrophic in many ways. But the fact that there aren't tens of millions of Chinese people starving, that's really good thing for international security and stability. And Wait, am I, did I have an aneurysm? Like what's going on? Jordan Peterson is like actually spitting currently. Am I misunderstanding the point that he's making? This is like kind of weird. What the and that's of no trivial benefit to the American working class as well. And the fact is that China makes a lot of cheap stuff that works mostly and that people who are more stressed economically have also benefited to that to a tremendous degree. So it seems that all of that has been good. The twist okay. towards uh -oh. a more totalitarian bad? mode of governance in the last 10 years, that's obviously extremely worrisome. The fact that China is a totalitarian state has had a very negative consequence on us in the West, especially in the immediate uh, what would you call it, in the immediate emergence of the, of the pandemic, because what we did was we rushed to imitate a totalitarian state. We thought, Chinese lockdown, we better do it. It's like, really? That's the, literally not what happened. As a matter of fact, China has a COVID zero policy, and we did not do that. What? He was so right. I mean, he was like spot on with his analysis of China. In many ways, if unless I like missed the part of it and I didn't understand because he loves the ramble on usually, but this is such a weird take. We did the opposite, and also other uh, countries that uh, Jordan would never consider to be totalitarian because they're capitalists also did similar. Uh, that took active measures, and because of that, we almost have one million dead people in America. Maybe he's talking about Canada, but even Canada has a fuckload of dead people. The Western the Western world got fucking comstered by COVID. I think JP was implying that we gifted capitalism to China and stopped their citizens from starving. Yeah, he's a base dangist, I think. Uh, much like Cenk is. A lot of people are. Really? We better do what the CCP did. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we did. And we'll see. We don't know what the consequence of that is yet. We'll see. Not good. Not good. In my estimation. And certainly the Johns Hopkins studies study seems to it's only a partial study in some sense they've done the cost benefit analysis costs so far we have no idea what the costs are of having kids in masks for two years we have no idea what the consequences are what that's done especially to introverted kids who are high in negative emotion because they're going to be looking for a reason to hide anyways and who knows what that's done to their psychological development both as children and as adolescents we'll find out over time but we haven't paid the price for the pandemic lockdowns even a little bit yet. Did we destroy our economy? Like these things take a long time. You know, they say if you're piling an oil tanker and you detect an iceberg in your path, you can see it. You've already hit it because it takes so long for you to turn that it's too late. Well, in some sense, these huge systems that we're a part of are like that is that 
you can't tell when they're broken because they take a long time to fall over. And I don't know if our system is broken, but we're going to find out. And I don't know if the pandemic lockdowns broke it. And maybe they didn't. And hopefully they didn't. I mean, I was in New York City in Manhattan a month ago. And it was the first time I'd really gone out anywhere other than Toronto. And I'd been to New York a few years before, and it's a bouncing place, Manhattan. I love New York. It's such an amazing city. You know, the fact that Manhattan can even exist is just an ongoing absolute miracle. Seven million people compressed onto that island, and it's... it's. Can you at least see clinical approach that children being mass and isolated from their friends? I think children being uh, children being uh, forced to wear masks at school is significantly less abrasive than children being uh, uh, children being uh, educated at home. So I think that that is a reasonable middle ground uh, to get to. And as long as every child is fucking vaccinated, and as long as like they're not you know getting clapped by COVID, then uh, at a certain point, I would wish that we could even you know. Once it does become an endemic, I, I would wish that we wouldn't even need to wear the masks at all. It's just a nuisance. Masks are a nuisance. Uh, they're annoying. It's the truth. They are. Um, but the teen suicide rates... Uh, wait, teen suicide rates have plummeted? Wait, I thought teen suicide... Wait, what are you talking about? I thought teen suicide rates have increased, actually, not plummeted. But that's not because of masks. That's because of isolation. Isn't Omicron almost the only mutation going around in USA like here? I mean, yeah. And even then it's like, it's on the, it's, it's, uh, it's finally peaked. Isn't it insane that our schooling system is just outright causing teen suicide? What the fuck is wrong with us? Many things. Okay, let's continue. Pretty damn clean and it's pretty safe and it's really cool. And there's something to do all the time and you can walk around free. And like that bloody place is a miracle. That's for sure. And it looked pretty good. I have a really, I have a weird take on this, especially because I don't have children. But like my weird take is guided by what I have seen, uh, what my experiences are. Maybe it's a conservative one. But my weird take on the children going to school is partially guided by what I've seen with my cousins who fucking loved the lockdowns, okay? Because well, one of them is like kind of socially awkward. The other one's very social. But they both didn't have really that much of a problem with the lockdowns because they were like, they're at home all the time. Okay. But I'm talking about like little babies, you know, we're talking about like eight year olds and nine year olds. Right. So like, that's a little bit different. Um, because no school means you don't have to see your bullies. No school means you don't have to like get into uh, awkward interactions. But then when you get a little bit older, when you're like 16, 17 or like, you know, 14 plus, then it's actually really fucking devastating because you're not able to see your friends at all, okay? But ultimately, one of the biggest problems, no matter what, even if kids were actually uh, better off overall with respect to like not being bullied and shit like that, I still think it's, uh, it's tough love that they should most likely have to endure. And what I mean by that is like, it's still good to throw them in an environment where they have to socialize and learn social skills. Like proper social development is really, really important. Maybe I am personally a uh, conservative uh, older person now, but I do feel like that's important. Uh, it's, it's really, really important for uh, the mental development, the a adequate mental development and social development of children, even if they don't want to. Um, of course, Children should still absolutely, you know, their, their condition should be better. Um, you know, bullying should not be tolerated, all this sort of stuff. Uh, but I'm, I'm certain that it's profoundly important for their development to socialize adequately when they're growing. Oh, what's up, dude? Speaking of adequate mental development amongst children, Rob Piker is here. What's up? What are you doing? Wide cam? Can I show you? Sexy man. Chat. That's right. Does the other, does the homie want anything? Go ask him. I'll get him some chicken too. Played me an ad even though I use my daughter's college money on a subscription. Fuck yeah, dude. 
That's a way better use, honestly. What's up, Knut? Maslavi, I don't believe it's a conservative take either. Having an active social life is incredibly crucial for development, and taking that away contributes to higher rates of depression. Under safer measures, it's so much better to have kids in school rather than get educated at home. Yeah.